All right, so good afternoon everyone and good morning for people in uh, in the West. Um, hello and welcome to Insight and Conversation. I'm Kiwi West Nevins, Project and Research Coordinator at, um, at ALIA. I'm joining you from Nanawal and Nambri lands and I acknowledge the traditional custodians and pay my respects to elders past and present and I'd like to especially welcome any Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander um, people attending today's session. Um, it would also be great um, to see in the chat uh, which lands you're joining from, so feel free to, to write in there and, um, and um, name those traditional lands. Um, and just some, some housekeeping, we are recording this session and it will be available on the ARIA YouTube channel. Um, I'll share the link with registrants and you're very welcome to share this among anyone you think might be um, interested. Today we are joined by two wonderful LAS professionals from the Yosey Toplitz Afters Library. Um, so this is the Australian Film, Television and Radio School in Moore Park in Sydney. We have Candice Diaz, Research Support Librarian, who wrote an article about building trust with library users in the latest issue of Insight, which we have here. And she is joined by Hayley Brown, who's the Library and Information Services Manager. So um, big welcome to um, Candice and Hayley. I have prepared some questions for you, but um, people listening, if you have any comments or if you have any questions um, for Hayley and Candice, feel free to put them in the chat. And if we have time at the end, we can, um, we can get going with those too. Um, so firstly, Candice, in your article, you write about this campaign, Your Space, Your Say, which is about you know, improving communication and better aligning your services with your library community needs. And so firstly, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about your, your library in general, and then secondly, how um, Your Space, Your Say came about in terms of the situation it was trying to, um, to address. And, and Hayley, if um, your response is to that, you're welcome to. Um, do you mind if I jump in, Candice, and just do the intro, and then I'll throw over to you for your space, your say, your space. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, we're part of the Australian Film, Television, and Radio School. So for anyone who's not familiar with that, with afters, um, we actually teach um, the behind the skill, behind the camera skill. So the directors, the producers, the screenwriters, um, the production designers. Um, so we're kind of the opposite of NIDA, and we're the library that supports that. So we support the students, the staff. Um, we consider ourselves um, the biggest, um, having the biggest collection of screen arts and broadcasting resources in Australia um, and it's mostly for training and, and research. Um, we do have resources on film, television, radio and emerging technologies. Um, for the collection we have a, about over 18,000 DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, yes we, just, we still keep DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, we have about 22,000 books which are mostly discipline based so books on how to do directing, how to be a screenwriter, that sort of thing. Um, we have a huge collection of scripts um, that people can use, that the staff and students can use. Um, we've been here, we've been supporting the school since 1973. So that was the inception of afters. And we've been around for the exact same time period. Of course, we've evolved as the school has evolved. Um, but uh, yeah, we're here Monday to Friday, uh, nine to five, um, no, it's nine to five, no, 10 to six. Uh, and we're free uh, to join as a member. So anyone um, uh, can come and join and, and borrow from our library. Uh, and they can, anyone can come and visit. But um, so yeah, uh, it's a pretty cool library. Um, but I'll throw over to Candice to talk about um, uh, your space, your same. Brilliant. Thank you for the introduction, Hayley. Um, so initially the Your Space, Your Say initiative emerged out of students returning from the COVID pandemic. So a lot of these students actually had just finished school. They hadn't been part of the physical library space or even a campus in general. And we were aware that the stereotype of the sh librarians um, is, is kind of everywhere. So we wanted to kind of break down that barrier. So with the uh, Your Space, Your Say, we released a survey to students that they were able to do online anonymously. And that allowed them to kind of be freer in their response was our reasoning. So we asked them what kind of services were they wanting to see from the library? What did they want from the librarians? So um, we actually found that one fifth of our student respondents were wanting one-on-one -on -one reference queries to help with their, um, with their assignments. And a big one was that they wanted a more engaging library space. So they, they have video games available to them. We were able to from this have workshops where it was even just inviting them to come play Mario Kart and Nintendo. And so initially getting them to engage with the space in a kind of a more relaxed way, um, saw our reference queries go up significantly um, from, from the May period. So, yeah. 
Um, and also, I just want to mention the library space itself changed around. So we were able to set up a section of the library um, that has board games, things that they can start knitting, um, and just interact with each other, do some origami. So that was great. That's brilliant. And it's, it's so interesting to hear how those slightly, well, not slightly, but different services that you've offered have then translated into the traditional library service of, you know, reference inquiries and, yeah. and increasing increasing those um yeah and thanks for the plug Haley. it's really great to know because not all university libraries are so easily open to everybody um and even if it's not quite as easy to get down to more park it's really good to know that that collection is open to anyone who's interested um and candace i totally agree with you that sometimes the stereotype that image of um libraries and librarians can sometimes be can sometimes be a real asset and sometimes be something that has to be um combated yes yeah. we, we, we have a lot of creative students so they don't always have the nicest um, relationship with school with uh, libraries when they're coming from school so yeah. it's, it's part of breaking down that barrier and that libraries can be a, a different place than what they've experienced in high school or something like that so we try and make it a bit fun <laughs> yeah yeah, and so thinking about your um, your really unique and special collections that you have there, like you know, films and scripts and things like that, um, and then also your library is the physical space and um, the digital space. I know we've heard of, of, of some of the things you've implemented in the, the physical space, so I was wondering as well um, what other things you were able to offer um, or change in your in your digital space. So um, with the, it actually happened due to COVID as well, and this continued on with return, um, is that quite often students do like to still continue to study um, in a hybrid working environment. So that means that they might not always want to come in or even speak to a librarian directly. So we were able to create this really great um, online self-paced assessment support guides even, how to do research, how to reference, referencing by citation, things like this. Um, a really great space that we were able to tap into was to celebrate uh, our students who are neurodivergent, which, um, you know, it's something that can slip under the radar and even minor things such as screen to text readers, um, screen shaders, things like this, we were able to create this really fun little libguide that opened up to students that neurodivergency was something that they could celebrate and they could use their strengths when approaching their assignments and tap into that creativity. So what was really fun about this, it wasn't just the libguide that we were working with. Um, Haley was fantastic and embraced the genial program, which was, we were able to create interactive guides. So students can click on various parts of the libguide and have pop-ups, go to different websites, interact with videos um, in a way that was more visually appealing, especially to our students. So. That was fantastic as well. Yeah. yeah, it's about making students feel comfortable in their space. And sometimes the space that they're most comfortable in is at home. So we wanted them to have the, be able to, to access the same sort of resources and experience at home as they could have in the physical space. Yeah, um, that sounds really nice. I know my um, my my usage of libraries has certainly been certainly been saved a few times by a good uh, a good libguide, but I've never had one um, that's interactive. So that's really um, that's really really great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so, um, so, so sorry, I'm sitting in the middle of the office. Um, just a little bit of you know, normal office chatter, which is great. Yeah. Um, and we've had really nice conversations before this about um, <clears throat> how diversity and representation and creating a safe space for your community has been a real focus for you. And you've, you've talked about that a little bit. And I was wondering if you could tell us about um, some of the ways you've gone about celebrating or um, centralizing diversity and, and making space for the welcoming to um, a, a broader, more of your library community. So we have a number of displays and one of, one of our permanent displays is um, an Indigenous filmmakers display. So whilst it's not, not necessarily about films that are about Indigenous people, it's actually about the filmmaker. So it's fil films that are made by Indigenous people around the, around the world. So straight from everywhere and that's a permanent display that we change up every, every couple of months um, to put different resources up. Um, it's not just DVDs and Blu-rays, we'll put books uh, and if we have any novels or anything like that, we'll have 
all that sort of stuff up as well. Um, we also have our main curated display, which um, if anyone's popped on our website, you'll see it's the almost art installation is the um, librarian who works on that, Raquel, is just amazing. Um, and we do try and uh, factor in um, the uh, LBG. QTI community. So we've had a few um, displays that um, represent that. Um, we're also looking into uh, possibly um, identifying some of the DVDs and Blu-rays uh, in our collection to make it easier to find both Indigenous films and uh, LGBTQTI films by popping stickers and that sort of thing on the, the, the spines of DVDs as people browse, they can find that sort of stuff. Um, I think as well, Hayley, we were discussing, I think last time we spoke, Phoebe, mm. how the library has begun to work more collaboratively with Student Centre and other areas of the school. Um, and this is a really important in a university environment because you want to be able to support these library users as students more, more holistically. So what's really fantastic is Student Centre have um, these, these badges that can identify students' pronouns without ha them having to verbally express it to people, which I think is really comforting for students. Um, it allows them to express who they are um, in it in several different ways. So as Haley said, we're looking at getting those stickers. So immediately people who are LGBTQIA plus identified can get to those resources a lot quicker. So. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I was wondering, if, if, I guess because lots of people are thinking through this maybe for their collections too. Have you um, decided on what those labels will actually carry that then um, other collections for LGBTQI plus collections um, or for First Nations collections? Well, they will probably have to, because um, this is something that we were having to work on further because we're aware that the LGBTQI plus A plus community, it's not just the rainbow flag. So we have other flags that are associated with that that we will probably need to take into consideration, which may also Haley, correct me if I'm wrong, we might we need to even assess our own subject terms as well correct. and reassess yeah. that. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, everything, you know, and um, all, the, all the films and stuff that we have in our library are all got um, LC, um, Library Congress subject headings. So um, that all those are being looked at and re-examined um, as they are probably in most libraries. So, um, it's yeah, it's all part of that process. Yeah, that's a really wonderful opportunity to... Mm -hmm. um, to, to reassess the way um, you're using controlled vocabularies and yeah, because we all know that Library of Congress has uh, some quite clear limitations in the way it describes things in the world. Yes. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> and so the, the relationship that you've had with um, the Student Services Centre and with other um, faculty, how, how is the, 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 um, the your, say, your, your Space, Your Say initiative being able to kind of um, talk to different parts of the university, whether it's kind of student services or different um, academics and teaching staff? Yep, so um, out of this Your Space, Your Say initiative, Student Centre actually were fantastic working with us, promoting this with students, you know, inviting them to come into the library space and interact with us. Now, because Student Centre focus a lot on um, the academic side, if students need help with assignments or extensions, they're able to direct those students that they've identified at risk to the library to get that further referencing support and assignment help and resources such as physical books, which some students still prefer, or films or articles and navigating those databases. So the communication between student services, ourselves, and even the teaching staff, <clears throat> which have invited us, the, the librarians, to go in and do little workshops and classes with them at the start of the, of the semesters and during times where it's really assignment intensive. So that's been a really great outreach program, would you say, Haley? Yes, it, it's, uh, we, we do connect with our lecturers and offer to go and teach into classes because sometimes the students just will be too intimidated to come into the library or come and ask us for help. So if we can actually get the lecturers to actually introduce us and as part of their curriculum, it means that we can actually get to where the students are and, and help them uh, where they're in a space where they're relaxed and they're more inclined to ask the questions that they wouldn't be 
they'd be too scared to come and ask by themselves. Um, so if they're in class, and they're more likely, we'll, even after class, we'll have um, sessions that will do one-on-one. -on -one. So we'll do a group session and then we'll organise one-on-one -on -one meetings with each of the students um, to make sure that they know that we're friendly and that we that they can come and chat to us. We try and make sure that students know that um, we, we introduce ourselves with our first name and have pictures and everything during orientation week so that people are, are inclined to come and talk to us, um, which does work. I do, uh, especially the week after or a couple of weeks after orientation, I get to, uh, people come up and tell me and tell me hello and they know my name and I'm like who are you um, which is sometimes a bit intimidating but uh, it's really good because it means that they obviously had a good time during the orientation process and listened um, during our presentations. Um, we do encourage students to come in and talk to us. We don't have self-checkout or anything like that in our library so if they want to actually come in to, to borrow something they'll have to come and talk to us. Um, we make them do it. It's just how it happens. Um, so we try and engage with them when they do check out. So we'll, we encourage them to come and talk about their favourite TV shows, um, their favourite films, um, anything they want to talk about, um, including if they're having, if they're struggling. Um, some of us are trained um, in mental health uh, first aid. Um, so we encourage them to come in and, and chat to us if they're having any problems. Um, we encourage them to sleep even. We, we say that they come in and use the bean bags to come and sleep uh, if that's what they need to do during their classes. We also let them come and eat their food in here. Um, they have to share their hot chips. That's our only, only really our only rule um, because that's just fair in my opinion. Um, so they can come in and we just like to make the space somewhere that they can feel comfortable and that they can hang out and whilst they're in classes. So if they don't want to go outside, they can come in and just feel and relax and do what they need to do and be themselves in a space that they say they feel safe to do so. I think as well, I just want to add to the point of the <clears throat> a library's online presence is that um, the libraries put through the initiative of having um, lib chat which is a fantastic way as well. So that means that whether the librarians are on the desk or if, you know, wherever the students are, they're still able to really quickly get an answer to their queries. Yeah. Um, and then if they're more complex, it can be directed to the correct person. And this may even involve other departments. Yes. So um, out of this, I think Haley started creating these facts, um, mm -hmm. these, well, these FAQs mm -hmm. that were really driven by student questions and then the responses that came from that. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was a big conversion for us over during COVID because we went from a very physical space. Um, prior to COVID, it was you come and visit the library, that's how you got assistance. We had emails and phones, but that was basically it. And then COVID, we basically shut down. And after we we were very cautious, our our um, our CEO was very cautious with how we were reintroduced after the COVID pandemic. And we were mostly closed for most of 2020 and 2021. So we needed to still be able to help our students and reach out to them. So we, we did a lot of work on uh, online lib guides, on uh, newsletters, on the lib chat, um, just to make sure that the students knew that we were accessible. We, we even did online trivia um, events and online screening events um, to make that so that we could um, engage with students, even though they were um, behind a screen, which um, were very successful. And uh, we all enjoyed, I think we all enjoyed the trivia nights and the screening. So they were really fun. Um, which we still do, in, we're reintroducing now into the physical space as part of your, your, your space, your say. Um, so we do try and do events and we try and, um, and like the video game days, we had an Oscar screening, which is always a fun one. Um, we're having a trivia event sometime this year. We have a, a 35 minute screening coming up of screen for Halloween. Um, so just different ways to sort of connect to the students, the computer game games are, are always a great one. Watching them all out there playing Mario Kart is always hilarious. Watching them all duel um, to see who could be the fastest. Uh, so yeah, it's it's all about connecting with the students and even with the staff. We want to try and connect with staff uh, and trying to make people as, as comfortable and safe uh, as they can, as well as supply the resources they need um, to pass their courses. I think your students are extremely lucky to have you and to see how you've pivoted, how, how you pivoted to the um, you know, the closures and then the things that you've taken on um, and continued, things that have proven to be really useful and um, in engaging. Um, one thing, one thing that I, I, I thought was just so wonderful when we were talking um, before this session was the size of the school. Um, can you can you remind us how many students and staff you have? Yeah, so um, we've already got 450 students 
So it's usually about um, 100, we have a three, a BA, a, B, a BA in screen. Um, so there's usually about 100 students per year. And then we have a master's course, which goes for two years, our master's in screen. And there's usually about 50 in that course. Um, and then they're broken into disciplines. So the masters are broken into the directing, the producing, screenwriting, that sort of thing. Um, we have radio, radio uh, graduate diplomas in radio. So there's usually about somewhere between 10 and 15 people um, in the two years of the, over that. And then we have a few short courses that come through. But yeah, we've about 140 students and about 150 odd staff. So it's a, a nice little uh, intimate community. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you can imagine that you really get to, you get to know people, which is, yeah. um, really wonderful and, and connects to a question um, that um, Jackie was interested in and was touching on something I didn't know quite how to articulate, but it's about, um, and I suppose this is for both of you, a bit of personal reflection, but um, when you're fostering that um, you know, trusted environment, what, what do you feel are the, the personal attributes that you, you, can, you bring or you've had to work on to achieve that, um, that sense of a trusted space. I don't know, Jackie, I don't know if you have any um, clarification or a better way of um, posing that question. Yeah, I, I'm really interested, Hayley and Candice, um, because obviously you've you've created this beautiful environment where, you know, that feels very warm and welcoming. And I love your inclusivity for neurodiverse people and LGBTQIA plus community. Um, but there's it seems to be there's a bit of a mad, bit of magic about who you both are in with your creative ideas, the way you promote the library and welcome people in. So in, in terms of the your active professional, um, your active professionalism as library people, you know, what do you see as the most important attributes that, that we can have to, to create such spaces? Did you want to jump in, Candice, or do you want me to go first? <laughs> Yeah, you can go first if you want, Hayley. <laughs> um, I think a sense of fun. I think to 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 uh, have a sense of fun and and to make sure that they understand that and that there's not a wrong answer or a silly question or anything like that. That it's a place that they can explore, that they can be themselves. Um, I think is another one. Also, that they yeah, that they feel safe and that they can talk to me on their level. That I'm not something that they can see is because I sometimes librarians can be seen as uh you know I can't ask that question because that may be they make me feel they'll think I'm stupid so um it's it's trying to sort of relate to them um as a as a peer as instead of a um uh, an authority figure I think is, is another one um, I think um yeah so I think you, you touched on that really well Haley. is that it's almost like you're you're a peer so we're working alongside the students to create this Arthur's community as opposed to there being any hierarchy of you're an employee of Arthur's and we're a student of Arthur's. So really kind of creating that kind of more linear environment, um, I think is how it works. And for me personally, um, I've always approached students, so I work very closely with students through their academic journey. So through the start of opening up their ideas and their assignments, and put in a personal a touch on that. So I come to them from a point of view as I'm also a student. So I let them know that when I'm struggling to look for resources, it happens all the time. I come up with ideas that are so left field that you think that they'll never come back on track. So the fact that I'm sharing their student journey at the same time, I think creates that personal kind of bridge between us. So. We're lucky too because we're a very creative environment. The, the school is very creative, and so we get to to explore certain things that are, that uh, probably a lot of other organisations wouldn't be allowed to. So we're allowed to to go and have that that you know have the Oscars party and you know sit and cheer when um you know certain people win and when other people don't. Um, that's an, we we don't have a we have a policy that you can be as loud as you like in the library. We don't really go and quiet people down. My rule is this, as long as you're not reenacting psycho, it's fine. Um, so uh, it's we tr yeah we try and make it because filmmaking is all about collaboration. And so that's what we want to encourage that people can come in and they come in with their friend group. They can come and have a laugh. They can come and play their their games in the viewing room. Um, they can come come do what they need to do and. And, and relax and yeah and and study. Yeah, I hope that I hope that answered the question. <laughs> no, it does, and it sounds like lots of people talk talk about it, but it seems like in your space you are able to really um, to to enact the um, 
the uh, non-hierarchical structure that you're that you're going for it's really it's great it's a special we're a special location so mm -hmm. you know it's being a special library you know, it's a yeah and, and afters is a special place um marissa has a question um marissa if i throw to you are you happy to ask a question yeah great can you hear me yes brilliant first of all congratulations this is such a wonderful session two thoughts come to mind. First of all, having come from a background of school libraries, um, I was fascinated by your comments about libraries being safe places. And one of the really strong memories that, because I'm sort of on the ancient end of the scale, um, one of the really strong memories that I have of working in school libraries first as just a teacher and then as a teacher librarian, is that there will be times when you get certain cohorts of students that go through a school who basically indulge in behaviour that excludes or puts down others. And I found that school libraries are magnificent places for students who feel um, under stress by being stuck with that clique in their class mm -hmm. to get into a new environment and to make new friends and new connections which are welcoming and supportive and shows them that they're not in a pit or a tunnel by themselves so that's the first thing and uh, you know it, that that just shines through with the sort of comments there I, you know you're dealing with young adults and, and adults so you're not yeah dealing with the, the, the dynamics of 14 year olds, <laughs> you know, when they yeah. go through those rather strange times. That's the first thing. Second thing, when you're talking about libraries being open and there's noise and there's creativity, I've noticed that there's a lot more um, openness now coming in with school libraries and even some university libraries where they're linking the library to the makerspace movement and I just wondered, is there anybody else or the, the two speakers, uh, obviously Candice and Hayley um, and Phoebe too, but if there's anybody else who's had any experience with that and have um, any feedback as to how that movement's going, because I can see nothing but positives. I can imagine that in some secondary schools, there might be tensions not from so much from the teacher librarians but from some staff members anyway any reactions from anybody and thank you fantastic talk thank you so much yeah look it, it does get sometimes gets a bit noisy and there are students who want to study so we do try and, and make sure that there are spaces that students can have quiet space or if a student does come up and say to us that they want some quiet space we'll either try and help them find somewhere either in the library or elsewhere on campus, or we'll talk to the students who are having their, their rave party to, to sort of <laughs> settle down. Um, but yeah, we found that um, it just makes them feel more comfortable that they, they can come in and they can they can talk to their friends and that they, they don't have to feel they have to act in a different way than they would outside. Um, so they, they're happy to walk in and just continue to do, to be them is what we found just makes it positive for them. Yeah. Yeah, and if they're feeling confident to be themselves when they're in that library space, you can actually build an even better relationship with them and help provide them with more resources because you know how their minds work and where they're heading. So you can feed in and say, hey, have you seen this? Or there's this that's available in the catalogue. Let me show you how to find it. Right. We, and we find too that they'll come back after they finish their courses yeah so exactly. they'll come back um we've had students who have come back after they finish their courses and they've used the library to write their script for their new project oh or, magnificent yeah so or they will come back to us and you know they're talk, telling us about their screenings or stuff like that so or, or just update us on how they've been going um in the industry and their experiences so um yeah we, we, we do so we do make relationships with students so that they they always come back and they, they still use the library even after they're not actually a student yeah. magnificent thank you so much okay. um candace we're on 1 30 now but i'm not sure if you want to add anything else to to that before we wrap up um yeah really quickly i would say that although we are dealing with um young adults 
it's very interesting as well because we do have students quite often come into the library as kind of an escapism because they will have a breakdown and it, can, and it can be very obvious and as librarians we also need to be there in that capacity to be able to to kind of help them in those situations so it is very much like a school library which is which is great so yeah thank you for that marissa thank you for your feedback as well um and just to wrap up there's been a lovely comment from claire um Lindsay in the chat who <clears throat> says hello from Kamaraigal country and she says that she did a short course in screenwriting at afters and she used her local library for some research and she says if she'd known how lovely and welcoming you are then she certainly would have come in um Really well, I can sweet. still come in. It'd be lovely you to can see you, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, um, I'd like to say a great big thank you to um, to you, Candice, and to Haley, and um, I guess the whole team, really, because it's a, a larger team there at the um, Yosey Tilpitz Library. And um, thank you for your time and your insights and telling us all about the your uh, space, your say initiative. And um, I'm sure that you'd be happy for people to get in contact with you if they have any questions about anything that you've mentioned today. Fantastic. Um, Thank you so much, Phoebe. Thank yeah, you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Have a <laughs> lovely weekend. Huh? Yeah. Thank you.